Back with Aztecs now, and uh, having talked to Brady Hoke about that game, which was, uh, ooh, a good team, TCU. Wow, that's a team. And uh, coming up with Wyoming on Saturday night for the Aztecs in that key game must win kind of a thing. A quarterback who has been much celebrated on a, t on a university that has had from Dennis Shaw to Don Horn to Brian Seip and McGuire's and, and Todd Santos and guys like that. And Kevin O'Connell, who moved on to the National Football League. Now Ryan Lindley is the next in a long line of those. I'm not saying he's Kevin O'Connell or anything yet. You're not Kevin O'Connell yet, are you? No, no, I don't think I'm there. <laughs> but from having that as, as a university, it, it puts a lot of, I think, weight on and pressure on, that, that especially with your weapons and, and, and the weapon that you are. There is a lot of pressure on you to perform, no? Yeah, I think uh, pressure pressure is how you take it. Uh, yeah, I've I heard uh, Keno McCardell say that pressure makes diamonds. So I, I, that's, that's the way I try to look at it. And uh, I think there's been a history of the school of, of, of productive offenses and offensive players. Also with the receiver position, if you look at uh, – the guys that have come out of here. So it's, uh, it's just exciting to see that we can continue and uh, carry on a legacy. Take me to this U uh, TCU team, because like I said, I, having broadcast in this conference since 99, seeing some marvelous teams, in, uh, including TCUs, this is the best team you played or close to it or in the top two, three, or what? Uh, you know, obviously with the, with the accolades they've gotten this year and, and the way they worked, it's, it's I mean, on, on paper, they're, they're clearly the best. And, and I think uh, talent-wise, speed, skill, they really just uh, have the complete package. When you went in that, because I mentioned it to your coach, to Brady Hoke, that you, I thought that offensive line, everybody's talking about Jerry Hughes, a great guy on the edge. I mean, this great speed. And he's not the only one, because they have a lot of other guys. And Washington, the linebackers, got that kind of speed, too. That your offensive line, I thought, overall, one sack after the first team had left for them, that did a great job for you to yeah. give you time. Yeah, they, I mean, all year, that's, that's, that's been the story. And I kind of, I told, told the guys before in, in fall camp and in preseason that, uh, it's going to be on them. Uh, how this offense does is, is based on how we do in the trenches and, and how the offensive line plays. And, and they've really stepped up. Coach Funk's done a great job of working those guys in practice. And uh, we really got some leaders up there. So some guys that step up. You said Peter Nelson did a great job playing against Jerry Hughes this weekend. Oh, I believe that. When you get done, I'm on the radio broadcast, Ryan, and I'm telling you, I don't call Hughes' name no. three, four times, and that's remarkable. A guy who comes in with nine sacks or whatever and a bunch of tackles for losses, that's a heck of a game, for, like you said, for Peter Nelson and the rest of them. When the guy is quiet and you don't notice him, that's a good thing. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I told Pete after the game I was, I was extremely proud of him. Uh, the, the way he's worked and, and being a senior leader, it's good to see a guy uh, have a performance like that, especially against some competition. Speaking of performances, take me back to Fort Collins, Colorado. This guy goes out there and, and throws for 459 and six touchdowns in, in another game where the Aztecs were not favored. You must have had a, a stupid question, a fun time that day. And I know you threw for 417 during one of your high school senior years. I remember that one game. And this one even beyond that. That must have been a hoot. It was. And really, uh, it, it was. Uh, that's why you play football. They have fun like that. And, and, and offensively, we were, we were playing the best we can play. And we were going out there and everything was clicking. And uh, we were really on a roll with Coach Board, just play calling. And everything was really just clicking for us. Speaking of coaches, this is a, that's a big change. I mean, you're changing head coaches. You've been around. They know you. You know them. Now you have a new quarterback coach. He happens to be one of the greats in Aztec history also, Brian Seip, NFL uh, MVP with the Cleveland Browns. That's different, though, in terms of A, different coaches, and B, everybody talked about you're in the shotgun, you're in the shotgun, now suddenly you're under center. Did it take your time to develop and, and feel comfortable with that? Because you look so much more comfortable than earlier in the year, I think. Yeah, Much um, I mean, it's a uh, it's it's a change. Uh, I think with the, with the shotgun style, you kind of uh, you get. I, I think almost the shotgun style, you, you develop a lazy quarterback. I think personally, uh, <laughs> there's a lot more footwork involved in, in being under center in the West Coast offense, and I think uh, it's just something that, that's helped me and, and the other quarterbacks become better players and, and complete all around players. Speaking of those coaches, working with Brian Seip, what is that like? Uh, amazing. Uh, every day is, is just a treat with Coach Seip. Uh, with the, the the amount of experience he has, is is more than than I'll probably ever have. And, and, in my career ever playing so uh, he's really got a, a whole bunch to, to teach and and we're ready to learn that's the old uh, he's he's forgotten more than i'll ever know kind of a thing which which happens all the time all the time in the broadcasting business and in the football business losing vincent brown what has that been like although demarco sampson has been if not vincent brown pretty darn close i thought you know, uh, I think it's tough just, just seeing VJ, the, the kind of competitor he is, and, and how much that hurts him not being on the field. It's just, just person on a personal level and, and friend to friend. But I think on the field, you know, DeMarco's really stepped up. And we've, we've got other guys that, that have gotten some playing time. I think it's great for Nico Sandifer to get in there as a young guy, and he's really gaining a lot of experience that, 
that's going to be vital for for his career and his success later on. And uh, you know, John Toledo came in like this weekend, mm -hmm. and, and he's really stepping up as a, as a third and fourth receiver. So I think you'll see him start to make some plays too. You know, Coach alluded to the fact that you guys didn't. I don't know if you mentioned uncomfortable or whatever. And somebody mentioned on the radio broadcast he wondered if you guys were in awe at the beginning of the game. Did you sense any of that before the game with not the right fire in guys' eyes? Oh my gosh, TCU and fourth rated because I don't think people at this level do that or have that kind of a feeling? No, I, I don't think so at all. I, I think, I think if anything, maybe we, I think with the false start penalties, maybe we were a little tight, a little edgy, I mean, ready to go. I, I think it wasn't any problem as far as competitive spirit, not, not being ready or scared of these guys. I think it was, uh, it was just being too fired up, maybe. Got a football game, say, at a weekend, and, and you watch college games and you watch the NFL games on the various days. Is there a handful of quarterbacks that... Uh, I'm learning. I'd like to do that. That's that's the. He's the best. I would love to be like him. Who are the, who are the guys that you would like to be like, or that really matter to you? You know, there's a great class around the country right now. I, I think uh, before he got hurt, I thought Sam Bradford was one of the, one of the better players in college. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's, uh, that's unfortunate what's happened to him. I think uh, I think Max Hall. You look at Max Hall and Andy Dalton. I think in this conference, uh, and I, I talked to Andy after the game, and, and he's uh, he's really done a, done a great job of running that offense. He's got he's got great guys around him, a good running game, and, and he's really made it work for him. Hey, Ryan, with your arm, do you think in the back of that mind, like Kevin O'Connell, do you think NFL for yourself at this stage early in your career or not? You know, where I'm at, I, I'm, I'm really all about this team. And I don't, I don't think there, there's anything else I can think about. It's uh, you got to take care of your business day by day, and, and that's the way I'm looking at it. I'm just looking at tomorrow. Ryan, I appreciate your time and uh, good visit, and uh, good luck against them, Wyoming Cowboys. Thank you. Ryan Lindley, number 14 of the San Diego State Essex, and has had a marvelous uh, season again after last year as a redshirt freshman, for heaven's sakes. Uh, not too many redshirt freshmen do that stuff or even start opening games and so forth, which he has done. From football to basketball, this Aztec women's basketball team went to the NCAAs last year, and with Janae Morris and company, uh, they are picked to win their conference this year. A report on her and them when Aztec Now continues in a moment.